guys, this is Keys to the Truth. And tonight, let's have some fun. Let's talk about, let's actually prove beyond any debate, beyond any reasonable doubt, beyond any controversy, that Sanskrit is, in fact, the primordial language of creation, the language of God, the language of the universe, the language of the cosmos, the language of this world and all others. Very simply, very in a very simple way. And um, well, let's have some fun. fun. <laughs> let's have some fun, right? <laughs> Imagine that. But no, seriously, let's have some fun. Uh, and we are going to do that using uh, some of the enemy's tools right here. Um, if you want to call them that, or you can just call them tools, whatever you, you prefer. Uh, so there's, there's several other ways you can prove this. But this one is just so simple because everybody's online these days. And uh, y you can corroborate this. So uh, it's a great tool way to actually... Uh, drive home this point and and put the baby to bed um, and, and share it you know so uh, when we talk about proofs we talk about things that are repeatable demonstrable and uh, and that you can share your findings and your methodology the steps that you took so, so that somebody else uh, you know in Australia or Africa or Asia or wherever they are can you know take the same steps and get the same results and that's what you call a proof. So uh, let's let's get on with it. So it's very simple. Um, as you can see, I have uh, the Google Translate tab open here, uh, and we have this uh, beautiful website. And I don't know who who the programmers are, programmers are, and, but they're uh, amazing, and, and they're doing a great job. And they also have this other one here, and this other one here. By the way, make sure you check out my website, keys to the truth.com. It's already up and running, and I'm posting all the videos on there as well. Make sure that you sign up for for the you know loose newsletter. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of stuff upcoming. We're gonna have some exclusive content on there, and uh, it just it's just a a safety measure in case. You know, we get um, censored in, in these other platforms. But on here, you can uh, you can certainly subscribe, and you can see the videos there. Uh, right there, you can subscribe. You can see the videos from YouTube. You can see them from YouTube. You can see them, see them from BitTube. Although BitTube has uh, a 2 gig limit, so I haven't uploaded there a bunch. Odyssey, there's not a lot of people there yet. Uh, we got our Patreon, and Patreon if you want to. Do that, and we might have some merch down the road. I don't know. We'll see. We'll play around, but uh, we're definitely going to have some books that I'm um, working on, and uh, it's just content that you can't see anywhere else, or at least I haven't seen anywhere else. And uh, I have to share this with the world. It's the uh, it's the sadhana. It's the work that uh, God has given me. Uh, so I, I I feel compelled to do it so and share it with you and the world. So anyway, let's let's take some examples and then you can uh, feel free, of course, to play around with what I'm showing you and share it with your friends and family, and share it with me as well. If, write it down in the comments section. Uh, let me know uh, if you find something interesting. So um, let's start with a simple one. For example, home. Right? What is home in German? So. Uh, and you can play around with the different languages that you know, or even if you don't know. So remember that um, don't get bogged down too much in the spelling, but more on the phoneme. So how do you pronounce home? Home. Home. There we go. I want to turn up the volume. And Heimat in auf Deutsch. Heimat. Heimat. Well, that's a little slow, right? Heimat. Heimat. Um, and so what does Heimat mean in Sanskrit? Here we go. Um, I'm Matt. You write it right like that. Maybe you don't get a result. So you shorten the word so that you have the just the the nucleus of the word, which is the root. 
Heim, you don't, you don't get anything. So then you play around with other uh, spellings uh, of the word, and then you start getting some hits. Okay. Here we go. So Heim, there we go. So what does Heim mean? So remember, here, somebody might object and say, hey, keys to truth, this is spelled with H-A-I-M. It's a different word. Well, it's, it's really not because, remember, language is um, spoken more than anything. The writing comes afterwards, and it's part of the fat fabricated uh, artificial word world that's been created around us to delude us from the truth. But language is essentially spoken. It's uh, cymatics. It's the sound of creation. It's the word of God. So Heim, H-E-I-M, or H I am does not matter at all for the phoneme, the spoken word is what matters. So when we see here, Haima means snow, it means cold, it means ice, it means a lot of these things. And you can go down these lists and, and you can even, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm very familiar with these words, so I, I want to like make good use of time. Hi, Ma, but for example, here. And Hi, Ma. So here we go. Right here. It could be a demon, yeah. But Vat means something that has a lot of, so like covered with snow is Haimabad. And also, it's also the name of the Himalaya mountains. So why is, uh, in, in German, why are you calling your Heimat or your Haimabad is you're calling it your home? Be, it, could it be that the Himalaya mountains were the ancestral home of um, some of the European tribes or the European people or the Germanic people? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but, you know, there's, there's certainly the Alps and there's a lot of snow and ice in Germany at times. So it could be just that uh, they're calling, you know, the snowy Alps um, Heimat. They're calling it their home because they, they come from the, a land uh, where it's very cold and snowed over. So that's a very easy one. A very easy one right there. Here's another word, uh, for example, um, this one I was reading up uh, yesterday, steal, to steal. And what is to steal in, in Sanskrit? And here we go. So with English, it's just too easy because English is just, uh, uh, it's a subsection of Sanskrit that's been, um, cut out and the, the letters have been mixed around. So it's very, very direct. Um, here we go. You see that? Steel, steya, kurt. A stealer is steya, kurt. So you have this root right here, steya. And uh, there's another one here that's more direct here. Stai, look. Stea, theft, robbery, larceny, anything stolen, liable to be stolen, thieving. Uh, well, that's a different one right there. So, um, a judge, <laughs> somebody that steals from you. The pronunciation is a little different there, to be honest. But uh, stay in, a fever, a mouse is called... Um, uh, a, a stealer because uh, and the word mouse comes from, uh, in another word uh, it, it also means from comes from there here look here mouse look mouse is called a musaka a mus a musica a musica and that also comes from here look muse and let's go to the Greek there Musa. Muse. Muse. Musa. It's Musa in Greek, which is, is the same in Spanish. Look. Musa. 
Musa. Musa, like they say, you know, the Spaniards, Musa. I love the people from there. They're so nice. And uh, the accent is beautiful, no? Musa. Musa. So a Musa is also a mouse, musica, and musica is music in English. Look. Music. Musiki. Music. And in Spanish it's the same thing. It's gonna be this very similar in a lot of Musica. 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 Well they pronounce the S there, so Musica. And then that's also a mouse, but a mouse is somebody that also steals little grains from you. And uh music comes for also from the muses. The muses stole your heart. So what is a muse? Look here. What is a muse? In Greek, Roman, there's no Roman mythology, okay? You might call it Italian if you want, but there's, it's the Greek, okay? Each of nine goddesses and daughters of Zeus who, presides over the, who preside over the arts and sciences, okay? And, and the muse here, especially a woman who is an artistic inspiration because they, they inspire you, but they also steal your heart, okay? So... Uh, you see how it all, it's, it's a circle. Everything's going to go back to the, to the root of Sanskrit, everything. Um, here, let's, let's do some harder ones. Um, which one do you want to do? Uh, let's do, um, some of the African tongues. Oh, let's do here, Hawaiian, Hawaiian, here. One of my favorite ones, here. English. Aloha, right? Aloha. Bye, bye. It's one of the most famous words in Hawaiian. It's uh, you know a little tiny island country that is just way off in the middle of, of nowhere. They have their own culture, everything. So what does aloha mean in Sanskrit? And I know all these already, but I'm gonna entertain you here. Aloha means not made of iron. Remember the A at the beginning, usually the notes, it's a prefix that denotes uh, the absence of in Sanskrit and other languages. Because uh, modern grammars are derived from Sanskrit grammar, although our languages were um, more than likely fabricated by uh, the fallen angels and their minions, um, just the, the coward humans, that, like the ones we have today in power, who um, have no spine and uh, who are um, traitors to humanity, basically. But so, going back to the subject here, I like... <laughs> I don't want to get too sidetracked. Aloha, what does loha mean? Loha means iron. It also means a weapon because weapons usually were made of iron. And yes, they were in the Iron Age. Metal, iron. It also means the color red. So a aloha or aloha means weaponless or I'm not carrying a weapon or I don't, I'm not carrying an iron or I come in peace. So it means peace in Hawaiian and in, uh, it, it's a greeting, and I'm telling you what uh, the origin of that is. So it, again, you're seeing here uh, a very common Hawaiian word, it comes from Sanskrit. And if you watch my video on, um, what was the, that first video I did on, on the proof that uh, Sanskrit is um, the language of creation, uh, make sure you watch that playlist. Uh, I'm gonna put it, down here, this is not loading, but I'm gonna put the, uh, and this is gonna be part of that playlist, but watch the very first one where I tell you, like, this is why they don't put Sanskrit in, in the Google Translate algorithm, because they don't want you to find out, because if they did, they'd have to upload over, you know, 10 million words, first of all, and these people are doing that. They don't care, all right? These are the very people, and, and these cowards over here, they do not want you to know that, okay? There's just no way they're going to tell you about that ever again. Oh, but keys to the truth. What about the Hebrew? What about Aramaic? What about Latin? What about Greek? They're all fine and beautiful languages, except the Latin, fake Latin. But guys, you have to do a lot more research, okay? Um, Sanskrit has over 20 billion recorded words that we know of. And you can still invent new ones. It's very simple. Um, and they're all real words. It's like Legos. It's the Legos of language. It's the, and why is that? Because it's a language that was created by 
the ultimate creator, um, the ultimate being, the creator of everything, the most high. He's the one that created Sanskrit and taught it to the first humans. And then after that, everything else came along, right? But it wasn't until the fall of, of the fallen angels, you know, that we actually um, get the, 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 the artificial uh, fabricated languages like Angelish, which is English, like we have today. So let's do more examples, okay? Let's do, uh, and it's very simple here. Um, let's do some easy ones, Spanish. Spanish, um, what's a word in Spanish? All right, here, hasta, like hasta, hasta mañana, hasta la vista, baby, right? Hasta, hasta. hasta. It's a preposition, it's also a measure of distance. So, as far as, right? So, what does hasta mean in Sanskrit? Here, look, it's a word in Sanskrit. And it means the hand, but more than just the hand, they don't have it here. It also means the measure of the hand. It's a measure of distance. Uh, so it could be all these things, a species of tree, a quantity, a position of the hand, and it's also a measure of distance, all right? So formed by the hand, it's, a measure, it's about a hand's length. And in Spanish, it means that it's a measure of length. Now it's being used as a measure of time. Uh, here's another one that's uh, very easy to spot. Hour, hora. Sorry, it's hora in Spanish. Hora, hora, hora. Hora. She says it better than me. Hour. Hour. What's the hour? We all know what time it is. What time it is? It's you know, 5 p.m., 3 p.m., whatever. So what's hora in, in Sanskrit? Look. Aura, that's hour. And that's where the word horoscope comes from. And that's where uh, they, the, you know, fake Egyptians also get the, the Horus, the, the, you know, the Horus, because they are also, uh, all these little in-between things, maybe they were true, maybe they weren't. Um, but to me, they sound like part of the big hoax to hide the fact that we used to have one or maybe you know possibly more ancient uh, Vedic civilizations that were super advanced that spanned the entire world and that had you know advanced technology advanced knowledge of God because knowledge of the universe is knowledge of God and um, you know the deluges came along catastrophes God you know just destroyed everything because of you know what happened with the watchers and the fallen like Enoch says and you know this is all in the Vedic scriptures too so in, instead of knocking them and knocking yoga and, and knocking Christ or knocking Christianity I mean we all need to like dive down deep dig deep and, and, and look for the clues look for the keys to unravel these mysteries I'm not a fan of Tartaria some people are I think it's also just another you know it may have been true maybe not but in my opinion it looks like it's just they're just trying to cover up they're just trying to cover up but it could be true right but i'm giving you here hard evidence in the language that they cannot hide they cannot destroy it because they can't create language out of nothing they need you know the, the silly putty they need the legos and then they start building their their new uh languages yeah, but they need the basic building blocks. So when you discover what these ba basic building blocks are, you discover Sanskrit. So enough of English and Spanish. I've mentioned some Greek. Let's do a, a really um, Swahili. Even the word Swahili is... Um, here, look. Japanese. Let, let, before we go into the harder ones. Japanese. What's a katana? Here, look. Katana. 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 Well, she's, she doesn't sound too Japanese to me. In all the Japanese anime I, I watch, I used to watch, uh, they just pronounce it Katana. Katana. Katana, that's very American. Well, what's Katana in, in it? Here, oh my gosh, it's a word in Sanskrit. And it's the shape of the roof of a house that is, you know, reminiscent of the, the bent shape of, of the shape of the Katana. Uh, even some like jujitsu, like jujitsu. Let's see if they have it. 
jujitsu here. How do I fix this? Sorry. Jujitsu. Reality? Well, reality. Jujitsu. It's a Sanskrit word. Look. It's jujutsu, and a lot of people still pronounce it that way. Wishing to fight. Pugnacious. Ear for battle. Combatant. A fighter. Somebody that's a fighter or, 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 or fighting, it's jujutsu. And that's where the word comes from for, for now for all these people practicing MMA and jujutsu. It's, it's from the Sanskrit. And it's even in, in the verse 1 of the Bhagavad Gita, when the fighters are set there, the stage of one of the biggest wars of history, over three million fighters, and it says the word there, jujutsu. Um, so a few harder ones here. What's that language? They say Yoruba Sulu. Here we go. Look, look at this one. Mandala. No, oh, that's not it. Here. And then, so you, if you don't find something, you can switch around. So... Amandla, they don't have the pronunciation, they don't have the pronunciation here, but power in Sulu is Amandla, which sounds a lot like Mandala, and that's a very common word in Sanskrit, which is a a, um, a magical, here they have some definitions, but a Mandala is actually a magical um picture or painting or geometry, it's a magical geometry like these. That's what a mandala is, which is said to be magical and which is said to give you certain uh, protections or spiritual or supernatural magical powers, like in Sulu. So guess what? African Sulu also comes from Sanskrit. Um, let's see some other ones here. Russian, I mean, it's just so simple. Russian and English are Sanskrit. Why do the Russian and English sound nothing alike? Because Listen, they took an L language that was over 20 billion words long and they, they cut it up. They cut it up into pieces and they split the pieces, okay, apart. So, for example, dog. Here. Dog. Sabaka. 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 Sabaka is a dog in Sanskrit. And, and sorry, in English, in Russian. And what is Sabaka in Sanskrit? Look. A puppy. Oh my God. So I'm giving you proof here. Russian is Sanskrit. English is Sanskrit. Uh, Sulu is Sanskrit. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do all these words for you. You go ahead and do some of the legwork yourself. Like be my guest. I'm showing you the key and, and you run with it, man. Because you know, I, I had one of the uh, my nicest uh, listeners and commenters. Uh, tell me like, hey, can you summarize the Bhagavad Gita in less than four lines? I'm like, it's impossible, dude. Come on. Uh, I'm, I'm. Do you want the truth or not? Are you gonna pay for the truth or not gonna pay for it? I don't mean money, which is a spell. I mean real payment, like spiritual payment, like physical labor. You know, like uh, intellectual labor. Actually, time. You're, because your time is your actual payment. Okay, and your spirit and your heart, that's the real payment that you make day in and day out. And sometimes you don't know, you know what you're paying for, all right? So there's there's a lot that goes behind the reality of what a payment is. I don't want to get sidetracked too much on that. But like, um, you know, are you, can you handle the truth like in that movie? Or can you not handle the truth? And, you know, in, in the past, like the real masters and teachers uh, and the gurus and stuff, they, they used to ask their, their students to give up their family and processions and go with them in the mountains. And they would start teaching them after years in the snow and, and penance and all that. You know, you, you're getting it here in your, in your iPhone or, or, or your computer. And like, good gosh, you, you can't go a stand, uh, like sit for 30 minutes or an hour and then do a little bit of research on your own. And I'm sorry I'm lecturing. I'm lecturing myself, right? It's just rhetorical what I'm saying here. But, you know, you, you understand. And I, I know that I have some of the best listeners in the world, the most intelligent, open souls, open-hearted people, uh, honest seekers. 
But, uh, you know, it's, it's something that we all have to refresh ourselves every day. Like, you know, what am I spending my time in, what, my, my mind in, my soul in, my, my heart, my emotions? That's the real currency, okay? So dog is sabaka in Sanskrit, Russian, sabaka. And it's the same thing in Sanskrit, okay? Now, um, let's see a really hard one, a really hard language here. What was that one? Euskadi here. Euskadi, where is it? What was hard about? Use. We don't have it here. Why don't they have it here? Euskadi. The Euskadi language. They used to have it. Or maybe I'm losing here. French. I mean French, right? It's that one is easy. Um, Swahili, here look, Swahili. Sorry, sorry, uh, Euskadi is the culture, the actual language is called Basque. It's from a region, region in Spain where they claim that there's no link to other languages here. Basque language origin here. Renowned linguists and historians believe that it can be direct descendant of the language spoken by the dwellers, blah, blah, blah. Like we, we were born in caves, yeah, right. That's comp If they're telling you that, it's the opposite. The Basque language origins date back to the Neolithic, but it's very that it could be older, blah, blah, blah. Where did it come from? Little it's known of its origins. So this is complete garbage, all right? Here, and I'll prove it to you, right here. What is dog in Basque? Dog. Tsakura. And like, I don't know how to pronounce it, right? Tsakur, Tsakura. Wow, that sounds pretty alien, right? So, but here, here's how we detect it. So, Sva, we know, we know Savaka is a puppy. Okay. And Sva, the root Sva, means also dog here, right here. Sva is a dog, okay? Svana, dog, dog, okay? So we have that word. And here's some, some other words for dog in English, and we do the reverse translation. So now that's another trick. Sva and kukurra. Sva and kukurra. And what is this word here? Tsa kurra. Okay, what is this word here? It's tsa kura. And what are they doing? They're just using, they're just united two different Sanskrit words, tsa and kukura, and they made, and because they, they can write a TXA all they want, but it's the same phonem, phoneme as SVA. You see that? It's sa, and here it's tsa. It's the same phoneme, it's the same sound. And kura and kukura. So sakura, it's a dog. Dog, it's a dog in Sanskrit and in Basque. So that's one of the hardest languages, and I've shown you how how they do that. So you you can go through all these here on your on your own uh, time and and look for, for different clues. Uh, Nor Norwegian. All right. So here, Viking. What's a Viking? Viking. 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 Okay. Viking. Viking. Okay. And so what is Viking in Sanskrit? Do they even have a relationship or not? Let's see. Let's see. Not much coming up there. Let's see on this one. Hmm. There's, there's more than one, so we can, we can always look for in the different ones. Viking didn't want, okay. Viking in Sanskrit. Okay, okay, 20 Sanskrit names and Old Norse. 
Hmm, I wonder when that one's not coming up. It used to come up. You must have scrubbed it. Here, no, no, they didn't scrub it. It's this one. Bikirna Kesha. Disheveled hair. Bikirna Mudaya. Mm -hmm. Disheveled. Disperse, bestrew, bikidati, revile, fill with, rent, burst, tear asunder. Right there. So, you know, they almost threw me off. Bikirna, famous, dispersed, disheveled, celebrated, scattered, scattered tribes. Um, and this sounds like the Spanish name for Viking here. Vikinga. There you go. So that one uh, took a little longer than I wanted, but uh, we proved the point. Let's see some other ones. Sulu. Even the word Sulu. Even the word Sulu is Sanskrit. Here, look. Sulu. A particular position in dancing. So, you know, you have that. Uh, uh, Africa, the name Africa comes from. Priya in Sanskrit, which is a friend, so very friendly people. Swahili. In Swahili, we have so many words. Yuma. And Swahili is also a Sanskrit root. Swahili. Well disposed to oneself. Beneficial to oneself, one's own good. It also means dog serpent. So, so many things going on. Remember that uh, we have a lot of this serpent worship because um, the fallen, a lot of them had um, serpent like features. And that's where we get all these terms for serpent seed. And uh, in the Americas, South America particularly, we get um, the serpents. A lot of the serpent, the plume serpent. Let's see if they have some of the. South American languages here, but for example, um, in um, I know in Nahuatl, I know a little bit of Nahuatl, Nahuatl translator, Sean. Nahuatl translator. Let's see if it pulls up. Uh, 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 no, no, no. I'll look at it in Spanish. And no, no, that's not good here. From the university in Mexico, we have uh, Nahuatl. And for example, the word for water, in Spanish, it's agua, right? So here we're going to go from English to Spanish and water, right? It's agua. Agua. And uh, what's the word? Here, what's it called? Come on. It's atl. Look. There. Atl is the word for agua, which is water in English. And in, in Sanskrit, it's at. Look. Hala. Or, uh, yeah, it's, there's so many words in, in Sanskrit. Like, it's never ending. But one of the words is up right here. Where is it? Up. Where, I mean, this one is kind of a stretch, right? Where you could get the, the P changed to a TL. But uh, the, the Nahuatl language, they, which is the language of the Aztecs, it, almost all their words end in atl. With, so it's water, 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 water. So like Quetzalcoatl, it's the plume language. And uh, like avocado is aguacatl, and that's the original. And... Um, so from the water, you also get the atl as in Atlantis, right? 
And uh, so, I mean, you can go down that rabbit hole if you want. But atul, what does atul mean? It means unequaled, incomparable, atula. So they're, they're talking about, you see how the language is, is just it's so beautiful. So in Sanskrit, atula or atul, the root, is going to be, you know, unequaled, matchless, incomparable. And what was Atlantis, which in, in Greek is, um, in Greek is Atlantida. Here we go. English, Atlantis, and in Greek, Gladiva, Gladiva, Atlantis, Gladiva. And it's got that atl in the beginning. Why? Because it sank and beneath the waters, right, of the deluge. Maybe it wasn't the deluge of Noah. It was one of the deluges before that. And there's some allusion to it in the Bible. Um, so we have there, and Atula was so it was probably a civilization that was you know, almost incomparable, unequal, unrivaled in the power. But it was a dark power, and uh, they ended up, you know, in, in the drink because of that. So uh, this is this is an exploration that I, I hope you like, guys. You can play around with this like all you want, and in different languages. And you're going to have some like crazy stuff um, here, for example. How do you say witch? Witch. Vrajitoare. 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 It's a witch in Sanskrit, right? So let's see what Vraji means in Sanskrit. <sighs> um, so Vrajitoare, okay, again. Vrajitoare. So Vraji in Sanskrit is who or what moves, a gale of wind, and uh, roaming, so going. And, and what is a witch if it's not somebody that can move things or move things around, or at least the, the, the people's uh, uh, imagination of what a witch is, like move around like the wind, right? So this is like, if you're, for example, Vraji, they don't have it on this one. So they're different databases are going to have different results. Brajin, and you can look around and see what you can find. So there's, there's a lot of things that you can see here. Brajit, you could look the life of a religious mendicant. It has that a female ascetic or non prabajita. So it has that root in there as well. So it means something, somebody that might have, you know, special powers. Pravajita, a term, a religious mendicant here with the same thing. Uh, female ascetic. Female ascetic. What is a female ascetic? If not, you know, could be referred to as a witch. Uh, here's, here's another one. Look, what is a bed in, in Spanish? No, sorry, I'm, I'm doing this, but, you know, it's languages that are, most wide, widely spoken. Kama. Bed. Kama. A bed is a comma where, where you sleep on. And what is a comma in Spanish? I'm, I'm, I'm spelling it with a K because there's no C in Sanskrit. Kama is love. And it's more than a, a specifically erotic love. That's where the name Kama Sutra comes from. It's also a desire and just a worldly passion, desire for the flesh. And so what do you do in a bed? You know, you sleep in a bed. You sleep, you know, you can just go to sleep and call it a night, but I mean, there's also some hanky-panky going on there, and that's where the name comes from. Kama, Kama Sutra. Kama. It's a bed. Bed. Right? So I proved to you, like, you can go on for, for ages. You can literally go on. We could go all on, uh, on all night. You can go on, like, for years and never end. Um, with with the Sanskrit roots for all the languages in all the uh, uh, in the world. So um, here, um, let's let's see what else. Mayan. I mean, do we need really need to go into the Maya? Because Maya is a Sanskrit word. 
you know, like, it, and it means the magic of God, actually, that's what it means. All these translations, by me, it also means by me, but by whom? It, it's by Yah, the, the Almighty, the Godhead. Tree, cherry blossom. Blossom. Sakura no hana. Sakura no hana, cherry blossom. Okay. So if we write Sakura. Cherry blossoms. Sakura. Sakura. Sakura, okay. And that's awfully close to. Here, look. Sakaharin is vegetarian. Vegetable is shaka. Shaka, which is Saka. Cherry blossom. Sakura. 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 You see the same root? Saka. Vegetable. Sakura. Sakura. And that's also a tree. It also means a tree. Um, a salad. Chocolata. And that sounds like chocolate, too. Chocolata. Sakura. And that's chocolate comes from the Nahuatl, actually. Uh, for example, a um, bread, bread in Nahuatl is Coyotlaxcal. And this coyotl, coyotl, coyotax call. And this, this is also the root for coyote. Why? Because maybe the bread and the coyote are the same color. So, so many things. I mean, this is never ending. Um, this is never ending. Chocolate. Here we go. Finally, chocolate. Why wasn't it coming up when I typed it before? So you see how you have to play around with these, but and then he here's gives you here the source 1780. I mean that's not really far back because you know the Spanish are, are said to have destroyed all the writing systems of the Aztecs if they even had some, and uh, you know murdering bunch, murderous bunch that they were. Both of them, so you, you know you don't have real winners here. I mean, I guess the winner is is you because you're you're getting these bits and pieces of information to put the puzzle together. So, but choc chocolate, chocolatel, chocolatel uh, is sounds like chocolata here, and I want to take a screenshot because sometimes it's hard to come across these again. And you know, chocolate is is comes from um, a uh, the the cacao, and the cacao was originally from from the Aztec places. Shaka Brit, it's a tree, and uh, here they also have like some other some other things. So um, Shaka is a particular tree. Oh, I have a really good one for you guys, like between the Osaka. So you have this Japanese, you have it in Sanskrit, and you have it in Nahuatl from the Aztecs. Three completely different languages, separated by time and space, allegedly, and they have the same roots from Sanskrit, from the, these vegetables, herbs, and trees, and, uh, you know, so there you have it, folks. I mean, that's pretty mind-blowing if you ask me. Because a lot of times you're going to be like, hey, where's the evidence? You know, where's the artifacts? A lot of them have not been destroyed. A lot of them have been destroyed by time itself or by water and petrification and just by God destroyed them. And then a lot of them, I mean, and the little ones that are still left, well, uh, the bad guys take them and destroy them or they hide them and then they use them to reverse engineer technologies and use them against us. So, where are we at? What can we look at? I think language is one of the strongest factors, but we have to do the legwork and we have to put the pieces together, right? So Japanese, 
Chinese, I mean, it's going to be very similar. It's very monosyllabic. I, I, I think, you know, you can do that one on your own, but, you know, certainly let me know what you think. Persian is a beautiful one. It's, it's very ancient. Arabic is also a, a beautiful one. Uh, where you're gonna find a lot of a lot of stuff. So I think uh, we've covered some uh, good ground from different places. And uh, please let me know. Let me know. Oh wait, 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 wait. New Zealand Maori. What's the name of the people from New Zealand? The Maori. Yeah. Here we go. Here, look, look, look. Uh, ocean. Moana, right? Like that. Like that. Um, Cartoon character. Well, guess what Moana means in Sanskrit. I discovered this uh, a few months ago, and it's just mind blowing. Moana. Oh wait, you have to add an H, <laughs> as if it mattered, right? So Moana in Maori means the ocean, but look what it means in Sanskrit. It means perplexing, confusing. It means bewitching. That's what it means. Bewitching. I don't know why they don't have it in there. All, all of these are, are not perfect, right? Sanskrit is just too big. It's too big a project. But Moana is the divine mother, which is the ocean. So it's Sanskrit and we're, I'm giving you Maori. For, and, and this is a language that's also out from the middle of nowhere, okay? And But it also means enchanting, enchanting. enchantment. Like spellbound, literally. So uh, stupefying, bewildering, deluding, infatuating. And you don't think the people at Disney, 33 mm master magicians, don't know this? They absolutely do, and that's why they named that uh, the movie the way they did. You know. So a few other words that we could get maybe in Maori, sky. We could look for dog, curry. It's it's the same one that we just saw, Kura, in Sanskrit, and the same one that we saw in, um, what was the other one? Uh, in Basque language. So, Kura, Kura, Kuri. It's the same root. So, I'm telling you again, and I'm not, and I can say this because I don't belong to academia, uh, and I don't belong to any of these clubs. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a swami. I'm not a guru. I'm not any of those things. So in a way that's liberating. And I can tell you anything I please. And the few people that hear me can maybe, you know, understand. Because remember that uh, the Bible tells us that knowledge will increase near the end of times. And this alone is telling me that we're getting near the place. Um, you know, I I'm not I'm not a doomsdayer or anything like that. But, uh, you know, it just a lot of things that are, are like, whoa, like just crazy. I, I would have never believed this five, ten years ago. Never, ever. But so um, this definitive proof right here that Sanskrit is absolutely the divine origin of the universe. It's the word of God. And I still uh, need to tell you that uh, uh, phrase that we have in the Bible where Christ himself speaks those words. Okay, in Sanskrit. But uh, again, guys, it's been a pleasure. God bless you on your path to the truth.